Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching another video for tipsgirl.com. In this video, I'm gonna have a look at how to create rays of light from scratch inside of Photoshop. Now, as a photographer, rays of light are one of those magic moments that when you see it, you just have to take a picture. It's great on landscapes, it's beautiful on portraits. If the atmospherics and the lighting conditions are just right, it works fantastically. It doesn't happen very often, and that's why Photoshop and rays of light are such a good combination. Here's a picture with one of them in place, and you can see the rays coming down here. Of course, it didn't actually have those. Those are the rays I've added in. It starts life like this. So to create my rays of light, the first thing I need is a blank, empty image. So I'm gonna to come to File, New, and I'm gonna use international paper A4. It's as good a size as any, that will be fine. That makes me a white image, but I actually need a black image. So there's plenty of ways you can do this, of course. I'm just gonna to go to Image, Adjustments, and Invert, Control I, Command I on a Mac, give me a black image. Now my rays are gonna go on their own layer. So I'll go to Layer, New Layer, I'll call it Rays TS for Tip Squirrel, and click OK. So the next thing to do is to paint the rays on. And it's not perhaps the way you might imagine. Um, I'm just gonna grab a, a paintbrush and from here we'll just go with, I don't know, just an ordinary soft edged brush, something like that. But the thing I'm gonna do is go over here to the brush panel. Now that'll bring up a few things that I can change. I can change the size. Let's go for a, a bit bigger brush. If you want your rays of light to be soft and fuzzy on the edges, leave the hardness low, but I like mine to be quite hard edged, so I'm gonna push it up to about 90-ish percent, and I'll increase the spacing so I can see the, the individual brush points. I'm also gonna come in and randomize things a little bit by going to Shape Dynamics, and we'll put some size jitter and angle jitter and, and roundness jitter in there, and the same with the scattering as well. I've got some scattering and some count jitter and. Basically, it just randomizes the shape a little bit. So once that's done, I can then come back with my paintbrush and paint with the opposite color. So at the moment, my background is black. I need to paint with a foreground color that's opposite, which is white. And I can just paint in here, just a, a few little clicks, and you can see how that's nice and random. Let's go for a smaller brush using the left square bracket. I can paint a, a few smaller spots in here as well. And then I'm gonna swap over to black and do the black as well. And you can see that just breaks up that round shape and gives me some, some randomized shapes. To create the rays themselves, I'm gonna use a filter. So up to filter, down to where blur, there we are, and then radial blur. And radial blur comes in two flavors. There's spin and zoom. I wanna use the zoom and I want the amount to be maximum 100. Now here comes the clever bit. You can move the center of your, your spin or your zoom around, and I'm gonna put it in the middle, right at the top. And then I'm gonna click OK. And that will start to blur the actual rays of light. And these are starting to look a little bit more ray-like, but we can go that extra step further by going back to filter, and then at the top, there it is again, radial blur, and it'll use the same settings so you don't have to repeat yourself. So that gives me some, some light, and I can probably go one more, but you can see that very quickly, I'm gonna run out of space on this. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna hit the edges. So this is why I've put it on its own layer. I'm gonna go to Edit, Transform, Perspective. I'm just gonna drag in the edges a little bit like that. Click on the tick, and now I can keep going with Radial Blur, and that should extend it down like that, that's great. And I can go even further if I use just a good old free transform, I can stretch these down. So you can see how I can change the shape and the dynamics of my rays of light. If I used bigger brushes, I'd end up with less rays closer together. Small brushes gives these lots of small lines. So that's my basic rays done. I'll just use a bit of levels, Control L, Command L, just to make sure they're nice and bright rays of light and nice deep blacks in there as well. There we go. Lovely, click OK. How do I get these onto the main image? Well, simply select an all, edit and copy, back to the main image, edit and paste, and there they are. Now, whenever I paste, I automatically get a brand new layer, so I can move my rays around and, and put them wherever I like, but clearly they, they wanna come up here from the source of light up here, and that's where a bit of free transform is gonna come in. 
edit, and then free transform, which is down here, spin them around and line them up with the edges where the light's actually coming in. Of course, you don't have to keep the rays like this. You can always right click inside, choose perspective and, and stretch them out. Whatever you think looks right for your picture, let's use free transform, stretch them out like that. And you can distort and turn and twist and warp and whatever you need to do to get these exactly how you think they should be. There are no rights and there are no wrongs. I'll just come out here. There we go. That looks good. When you're happy, just click on the tick. So that puts my rays across the picture and they're still movable, but um, I think what I want to do is add a little bit of color in here as well, because there's a warmish tone to these rays and I want that to be repeated in my rays as well. So I'll use a bit of image adjustments, hue saturation. I'll click on the colorize button and you can see that now I can colorize my rays of light to tie in with the theme and color of the picture. Okay, so we can make them brighter and a little bit sort of yellowy in tone. That's lovely. And that just adds a hint of color because of course they would pick up color as they came through the leaves. Now, whilst that's okay, I still think I want a little bit more over here. There we are. Let's, let's go over there a little bit. It does look like it's just all coming in front of the model and not behind. So I'm gonna add a layer mask in here. Layer, come down to layer masks reveal all and then I'll get a paintbrush and I've still got my randomized paintbrush. Remember that from before? I'll paint with the opposite color to the mask, which is black. And we'll just paint a few little clicks across. Now it's got a hard edge there. So I just need to remember to come in here and drop my hardness down. There we are. And we can just bring some of the rays off of her face like that. And if I drop the opacity down, down to about 50%, I can then just add a few little clicks here and there just to break up the rays so just they look a little bit more natural and a little less artificial. And that adds some rays into the scene without it becoming too horribly obvious that you've actually done anything at all. So there you go. There's how you can create your own rays of light and then use them on your picture to create a fantasy effect that looks pretty realistic. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the rest of the content of tipsgrill.com. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.